Good evening, everybody, and welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Pierre Lemonnery from Bordeaux, France. After completing his medical school in Limoges, France, Dr. Lemonnery completed his orthopedic surgery residency at the Pierre Paul Riquet University Hospital in Toulouse, France. He went on to complete an inter university diploma of hand surgery at the Institute Lapomoto in Toulouse University Hospital, France. Subsequently, he completed a research fellowship at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, United States. Currently, he is working at the AZ Monica in Antwerp, Belgium. So today, it's my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Pierre Lamonnery from Bordeaux, France. Over to you, Pierre. Hi, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you for this opportunity to present our recently published paper regarding a sensory innovation of the elbow and the selective total elbow denervation procedure. Um, based on the current available literature, total de denervation of the elbow joint was considered impossible. However, consensus with respect to the anatomic location of sensory branches was lacking. And in 2020, we previously published in Clinical Anat a literature review in an effort to establish the anatomic futures of the articular branches innervating the elbow joint and the distribution of sensory receptors about its capsule. Uh, the resulting uh, frequency map of articular branches and sensory receptors provides um, an anatomical basis to which to propose selected elbow denervation. And thus, we published a second study to assess the feasibility of a selective total elbow denervation. So, um, for the elbow um, joint innovation, the, the aim of this literature review was to establish a consensus with respect to the anatomic features of the articular branches and the distribution of sensory receptors about the capsule. For electronic databases was required uh, between 1945 and 2019. Our electronic search yielded a total of 720 studies. And after applying uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria, we included in this, in this review a total of five articles related to the elbow sensory receptors and uh, sorry, and, 20, and 16 uh, related to the articular branches. So a total of 21 uh, studies. As you can see, this is a summary of uh, 16 studies uh, describing parent nerves, uh, which provide uh, branches to the elbow joint. And these studies uh, with the greatest number of description were uh, clinical studies you can see here, for example, with Bateman. Uh, these were mainly studies on treatment of resistant cases with epicondylitis by denervation. Uh, the articular branches of the elbow joint were found to arise from the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, the muscular the musculocutaneous nerve and the MEBC nerve, the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. Uh, the antibrachial uh, cutaneous nerve was only published in one paper uh, with uh, De Cazelle in 2012. So for the capsule and the receptor, the entire capsule was found to be primarily innervated by a plexus of articular ramification from muscular branches of mixed nerves, which are the ulnar nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, the radial nerve, and the median nerve. On the other side, for the posterior capsule, it was found to be um, primarily innervated by the ulnar and radial nerve via combined articular branches and sensory branches of the MEBC nerve. You can see also that the density of mechanoreceptor was higher in the anterior capsule than posteriorly capsule. In the green area, here, for example, uh, the proximal uh, portion of the capsule contained the highest density of mechanoreceptor irrespective of coronal depth. And in 2019, Colin and its colleague were, uh, also highlighted the scarcity of uh, mechanoreceptors in the mid substance of the anterior and posterior capsule. For the ligaments, as uh, mechanoreceptor uh, were evenly distributed through the ulnar uh, annular ligament and the transverse band of the MCL. But for the over ligaments, an increased density was noted toward the origin and distal insertion of the lateral and medial collateral ligaments. Conversely, a higher density of nociceptor was found in the posterior as compared to the anterior capsule. However, the, density, the highest density of nociceptors receptors can be found at the attachment of the joint capsule under the undersurface of the ECRB origin, just here, where it merges with the supinatal muscle complex. So 
The anterior capsule is innervated by a thin plexus of uh, muscular nerve branches, uh, which makes their dissection very complex. And the transection of these branches may lead to an iatrogenic motor deficit. Conversely, noceptive branches arising directly from mixed and sensory nerves, such as uh, the MEBC nerve, uh, have a well uh, established course about the posterior capsule. And finally, we postulated that through denervation of the posterior capsule in addition to nociceptive branches to the anterior capsule, it will be sufficient to reduce pain and maintain the integrity of mechanoreceptor primarily located in the anterior capsule. So, and thus uh, we assumed that uh, this targeted denervation technique should focus on the posterior capsule, but also include nociceptive fibers supplying the anterior capsule. And the aim of the second study was to assess the feasibility of selective total elbow denervation by there are two anteriorly based approaches. The procedure was performed in 10 steps and in 14 fresh cadavers by an anteromedial and an anterolateral approach. The minimum distance between the, the incision was 3.4 inches. The skin between uh, should reduce uh, the potential risk of cutaneous necrosis. And we prefer maintaining the integrity of the posterior aspect of the elbow to avoid hindering future posterior approaches necessary for total elbow atroplasty in cause of uh, elbow denervation failure, for example. Um, so the specimen were uh, always in the supine, uh, supine position and the arms were positioned in abduction and the forearms in supination. So for an anterior lateral approach, we did an incision with a mean length of five inches along the anterior uh, border of the brachioradialis muscle. In the interval between the bicep brachii and brachialis, uh, the musculocutaneous nerve, you can see, see it here, um, was identified and its articular branches was transected at a mean distance of 0.7 inches proximal to the lateral epicondyle. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm, the CPAB here, uh, was identified in the subcutaneous path, and uh, it was at mean distance of 2.3 inches proximal to the lateral epicondyle, and we also resected its posterior branch. For the radial nerve, it was a little bit more complex. Um, the radial nerve was also identified between the brachioradialis and the bicep brachii. The dissection of the radial nerve was performed in a proximal to distal until the, the aponeurotic edge of the supinator was reached, but this letter was not incised. Uh, the collateral branches of the radial nerve, um, the collateral branches of the radial nerve was, um, was named by um, Willem in 1996. And uh, it's showed by uh, the arrow, uh, the white arrow here and here. And, um, this, this branch uh, were identified beneath the superficial fascia and running together with the lateral collateral vessels. Um, but this, and, and this branch were resected at a mean distance of 2.7 inches from the lateral epicondyle. For the anteromedial approach, the, the patient were in the same position and we did a six inches incision uh, along the anterior border of the extensor capillaris muscle, extending proximally along the medial border of the biceps. Now in first, the MEBC, you can see it here, was identified at a mean distance of 2.7 inches from the medial epicondyle. This later was dissected in a proximal to distal direction. You can see it like, like this. And the nerve um, was then elevated from the surrounding subcutaneous fat from a deep level to a superficial level, and thereby resecting all uh, articular branches and preserving br branches innervating the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, for the articular branches uh, of the median nerve, uh, um, this letter wa uh, wa was uh, transected at a mean of 0 0.4 uh, inches from the medial epicondyle. You can see it here, just here. And um, where, whereas over muscular branches were uh, preserved, they were detected and preserved. Um, after for the ulnar collateral nerve, this nerve, you can see it with uh, the right arrow here, uh, this nerve uh, was identified deep to the medial intermuscular septum, uh, just there, uh, and uh, superficial to the ulnar nerve, just here. Um, it was then resected at a mean distance of three inches from the medial epicondyle. Uh, 
And finally, the the ulnar nerve were also uh, dissected and unroofed from the, uh, uh, in a proximal to a distal uh, dissection uh, with the cutting of all the articular branches. So the anterolateral and anteromedial approaches allowed for the identification of all mixed and sensory nerve in all 14 cases. Um, the main number of resultant articular branches per cadaver was between one and three for all nerves. However, concerning the median nerve, um, given the low uh, rate of identification of articular branch and the high risk of um, the high risk of injury to the brachial artery, I felt that the exposure and subsequent sec sectioning of its articular branch was not justified. Um, so. When you ask me the question, selective uh, total elbow atroplasty, uh, total elbow denervation uh, procedure was, uh, was it feasible? The data here suggests, yes. The data suggests that this procedure via two approach is feasible. So for me, the key lesson learned from these studies is not that, uh, it, it's, it, it's not uh, about um, the feasibility of this, um, uh, of this total elbow denervation. The key lesson learned from these studies is that the rich capsular innervation may explain some of the pain associated with osteoarthritis or synovial uh, inflammatory processes that stretch the capsule during mobilization. And the capsule, and especially the posterior capsule, appears to be the primary pain generator in the elbow joint, given its high density of nociceptor and mechanoreceptor. We rarely think about its critical role of the capsule in the elbow joint, but the capsule could be one of the primary pain generator of the elbow joint. I feel that the capsule may be the dark side of the elbow pain. Of course, further research is required in order to determine the proprioceptive and nociceptive role of the elbow capsule and its contribution to the function of the elbow joint. But this this finding could just open the door on further research. Our literature review highlighted the potential anatomic basis for pain generation from the posterolateral and posteromedial capsules. And our cadaveric study suggests that selective total denervation of the elbow was feasible. So it may be an attractive alternative to the total elbow atroplasty for young people with a painful advanced osteoarthritis. However, obviously, this study did not allow us to predict the clinical outcome or, uh, or complication that may occur uh, for after this surgery. And additional uh, studies are needed to determine the, the safety and the effectiveness uh, of this method in terms of pain relief. Uh, I just want uh, the completion of the of the studies could not have been uh, possible without Dr. Susan Robert and uh, Elise Lupon. So I wanted to thank them for their contribution. Thank you for your interest and, and attention. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre, for that uh, brilliant presentation and congratulations for your papers. Thank you. A uh, couple of questions. What are your indications? You have mentioned about arthritic elbow. What do you think are the other indications where you can do a denervation procedure? Yeah, uh, it's a really good question because a patient with a mild osteoarthritis uh, who experience pain stiffness during extreme motion uh, due to the impingement uh, may benefit from open or atroscopic osteocapsular debridement. Open and atroscopic procedure provide a good short uh, and a good midterm outcome in a younger patient with moderate osteoarthritis. Uh, for patients with uh, advanced degenerative disease, uh, it may be appropriate to consider atroplasty option. But the, however, this must be considered as a salvage option because they are associated with a high rate, uh, high rate of complication. Um, in a few theory, we can find 42% uh, of complications and uh, they are associated with postoperative activity limitation. Um, so elbow denervation could be an attractive uh, therapeutic option for active patient with severe osteo, uh, osteoarthritis. 
the stiffness is not the main symptom. The main symptom should be the pain. For me, what is the main indication? Thank you, Pierre, for that. Uh, can we put it in a different perspective? For example, suppose you have a failed surgery. Suppose you have a failed elbow fusion or a failed arthroplasty. Or suppose you have a chronic lateral pay, elbow tendinopathy, for example, a chronic lateral uh, epicondylitis that is not responding to your conventional methods. And that could be a better indication for an elbow denovation. Can we put in that perspective? It's interesting because um, as, as you can see, um, I proposed this uh, therapeutic for young people before the total elbow atroplasty. And in your question, you asked me if I can do it after a total elbow atroplasty. So it's very interesting because I didn't think about it. Uh, it's difficult to answer because um, I think uh, we need um, further clinical study to know if it's efficient or not first. And after we can say, so it's efficient, don't we, so we can do it for uh, this patient or this patient and uh, with reliable indication. But your question is very interesting because in fact, uh, this the total elbow denervation or a partial elbow denervation um, can be due for a lot of indication for epicondylitis. It has been um, published with uh, a lot of, um, in a lot of series. So it's efficient for lateral epicondylitis and for medial epicondylitis too. Uh, so I think it's, it can be a good solution. It can be a good solution for patients with persistent pain, but we need to talk with cushion and we need to say uh, it's important to, um, to confirm the result with clinical result, with clinical study, sorry. Thank you, Pierre, for that. And just one last question before we wind up the session. Uh, Pierre, suppose you have chosen a partial denervation for a young patient who has an arthritic elbow. And later on, he says to you that I want an arthroplasty done. Okay, for example, uh, some, we know situations where we do an arthrodesis, ankle arthrodesis first, and sometimes patients later say they want to get converted to an arthroplasty. Similarly, if you do a denovation first for an arthritic elbow and later the patient says, okay, I want to get an arthroplasty done because that will restore my range of motion as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah. do you think that is a good, uh, I mean, it's how very do you respond to it? It's a very interesting question. And in fact, even if uh, the clinical results are good, this question is pertinent. Because with denovation, we are focused on the pain, not on the range of motion. You cannot improve a range of motion with just denervation. It's a really good patient. But we need to be honest with our patient. With the patient is very young. When I say very young, it's under, under 55 years old. Uh, Professor Mansat uh, proved it in a, paper, in, a, in a recent paper in GSCS. The total elbow atropacy uh, has really poor outcome in uh, the younger people. So if a patient wa want to increase its, runner, its range of motion and is very young, I think it's not a good solution. I think you need to, um, you need to wait. Uh, and uh, total, um, total elbow denervation is a solution for his pain, but you need to wait the stiffness it's not, I, I understand the stiffness is, uh, um, is, um, is really uh, associated with, um, with a post-operative, with a limitation of his post-operative uh, post activity. Uh, but but um, I think total elbow atropacy is not a good option for these young guys because they're gonna have a, a very high rate of uh, complication and Thank you, Pierre. I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Fantastic lecture and congratulations for your paper. And I'm sure this lecture is going to open up new avenues for research for all those who are watching this program. Thank you so much for joining in, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.